So Pocket Host doesn't just specialize in farming Simulator 25 servers, although that is really why we're here today. They offer servers for a wide variety of games, including Minecraft, V Rising, Valheim, and Shroud, Seven Days to Die, Power World, Factoro. We also have Euro Truck Simulator, Satisfactory, American Truck Simulator, Daisy, and of course, Farming Simulator 25, which is what we're here to talk about today. With respect to Farm Sim 25 dedicated servers, first thing you're going to need to do is give it a name. What do you want to name your server? I'm going to name mine FK Community because this is going to be a server I'm going to offer available to my community over at the Discord. Then we're going to need to choose how big of a server do we want. We have options in 4, 6, 8, 10, or 16 slots. Now a slot count is a concurrent player. So if you have yourself and three other farm sim friends and you want to get together on a server on occasion to have a fun time well then a four slot server is going to be right up your alley if you have six friends or less then a six slot server just might fit the bill for my purpose and the community i'm going to go with the largest server possible at 16 total slots is there an option to go bigger than 16 no, that is a limit by farm sim server itself, not necessarily the host. And this means that we can, just like we did for our launch party, have up to 16 players on the server at any one point in time. The next thing we're going to want to talk about is how much mod space do we want? And Pocket Host offers a default of 5 gigabytes of mod space. That is pretty darn good if you ask me. I used to use a dedicated server host way back in FS17 and early in the FS19 days that only offered four gigabytes. No options to upgrade, that was your only choice. And that could get a little tight if you talked about using a map that was fairly large in file size and you like to use a fair number of mods. Well, if that is the case and five gigabytes is a little bit constraining for your style of gameplay, then you can triple that for just a buck more per month. So you can go to 15 gigs of mod space and quite honestly, I think that's where the sweet spot is because it's just a buck more and you're going to get three times five gigabytes, which is a pretty ample amount for a dedicated server. You start getting a whole lot of mods, then the server's going to take a fairly long time to boot up and load up and performance could start to suffer because typically the more mods you have, the more machinery you're going to have on the server at any one point in time. And well, we can get to a point of diminishing returns. If, though, you're willing to kind of go through the bold new horizons and blaze a new trail for yourself, you could go with 45 gigs of mod space. That's over 10 times the limit of that host that I was talking about previously for a total of $4 more per month. I don't know of any other dedicated server host that's going to offer up to that much storage space. That is a pretty dang good deal if you find yourself constrained by the 15 gigs of mod space. I'm going to go with 15 gigs for my community server because quite frankly, I like to run a little bit more of a lean server, but I don't want to be constrained if we're going to be doing map testing on maps that aren't quite fully optimized yet, which means that they're going to be pretty chunky in size. Now, the next option is going to be how many backup slots do you want? A backup slot is going to allow you to have one or three backups of your configuration and your save games and your mods on pocket host servers i'm just going to go with zero backup slots honestly that's the default because i'm going to have my own copy of the mods on the server because you need a copy of every mod that's on the server in order to connect to the server so in essence you already have that backup and then i'm going to show you in another video how you can quickly and easily back up save games on a periodic basis and it's not too hard to reconfigure the server. Again, I'm going to show you that in another video. The last thing you're going to pick is which region do you want the server to be located in? In theory, you're going to want the region to be fairly geographically close to you and your player base. For me, I'm going to pick New York City because we have players that are in Europe and in the U.S. And that for me is going to be fairly regional specific, meaning kind of splitting the difference between Europe and the U.S. Currently, they also offer farm sim servers in Dallas, Texas, Strasburg, and Frankfurt. Now, I know that this is not the complete list of regions. This is simply the list of regions that are available 
for servers at this time. So as things come and go, there's going to be server availability come and go as well. And you're going to see the regions change over time as more regions have farm sim servers available. But again, we're just going to go with New York. Once you have answered all of those questions, well, we're going to go over here to order our game server. And from here, well, it's just a matter of entering in your payment details. Once your credit card payment has been processed, you're going to get a nice thank you note from yours truly. Thank you for purchasing the server through Pocket Host and my affiliate link. And you can see in the background, our server is actually already configured and it's already starting up. And from here, well, we can see some status information about our server. We can see our IP address for our server, what port we need to jump into in order to connect to it, and the status. Is the server online or off? At any point in time, we could restart the server by just clicking this button. It's going to stop the server. It's going to shut it down. It's going to restart it. And we're going to see a scrolling log here down below that basically shows us the server restarting. We can also stop the server at any point in time if we just want to stop it so we can do some admin tasks. From our console, well, we can see the console. We can click here to go to the web interface for Farming Simulator 25. More on that in a separate video. And like I said, we have our web console. Those of you that have seen my dedicated server video, well, this is the same console that spawns up when you launch the dedicated server application on your own system. So it's not overly difficult to understand. From here, we can type various commands. Well, let's see what happens. If we just type control C, I didn't think that would work, but that's okay. We can see information about our uptime. How long has the server been up? What is the overall load of the server? Our storage, our memory that is being used by the server. How much storage space is being used? And that is gonna be our mod space. We have our network connectivity in and outbound. And then who doesn't like some nice charts? So we've got some nice charts here on overall CPA load, memory load, and our network traffic in and out. Let's talk about these other tabs. We can go to settings. This is gonna be specific to our web server. We can change the password to our web interface. I would definitely suggest changing it from the default. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that offline. We can also change the password for our web stats access code. Again, I wanna change that offline. And here we can see the total number of slots that are available for the server. We purchased a 16 slot server, so that is gonna line up. This is a read only field, so it is not changeable after you make the purchase. We have a really cool web upload interface here, and this is gonna allow us to navigate our server. We can go here to profile, and from here we can go into mods, and I've got a mod that I already uploaded here because I was just testing some things out but this is how you can easily upload mods to the server without using the farm sim web interface. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to upload, navigate to your mods folder, and then from here, well, let's just go ahead and upload all of these mods minus the one we've already uploaded. So it does multi-select work. It does look like it does indeed. And you can see we are uploading those. We can click and see the status. And there we go, we've uploaded all of those mods. So this is gonna be a very, very easy way for you to upload and admin your mods on your server. You can go here if you want to. At some point in time, you can also delete the mod once you are done using it. But there's other ways also to work with mods. We're gonna talk about those here in a moment. If you purchased any backup slots, well, this is where you're gonna be able to make your backup by going here to backups, you're also gonna be able to see your backups that might be here. From network, this is gonna show you your primary and secondary IP addresses to connect to your web server. We can schedule things, like we can schedule a restart of the server by just going here, and then we can set up a little cron job to automatically restart the server if we need to. It might be a good idea to restart daily, at least until we get a few updates into FarmSim's lifespan, just to make the server run a little bit more smooth. And then under advanced, 
we have the ability of either one, reinstalling the server. So if all else has failed, everything is just messed up, nothing seems to be working the way it should be, then back up your mods, back up your save games, come over here to advanced, click this button, and it's gonna completely reinstall the server from scratch. You should be back up and running in just a matter of a few minutes. We also have SFTP details or Secure File Transfer Protocol. This is another way that you can upload mods to your server and just generally interact with the server file system. If you don't know what FTP is, that's a subject for a completely different video and probably a subject for someone else's video. I'm not gonna dive deep into FTP because I feel that the uploader that they offer here under the files tab is pretty full featured rich and probably will work for most folks. But if you know what FTP is, you can use FTP to manage the files on your server by going here, grabbing the address, grabbing the username, and basically setting a password, and there you go. We're gonna jump back here to console at this point, and we're going to click on our go to admin panel, and this is where we're going to admin our server. Basically, this is where we can start and stop the game. This is also where we can configure what map we're gonna play on. We're going to set admin passwords in the server here and other things. This is gonna be covered in a different video. So do check my tips and tricks playlist for this specific video so you can learn more about adminning the server from the actual FarmSim dedicated server interface. That's gonna do us for our video here on using Pocket Host and renting a server and how you can be up and running in like literally less than two minutes. Assuming again, you've got all the information you need to do. What are you gonna name it? How big of a server are you gonna pick? How many, how much mod space do you want? How many backup slots do you want? What region do you want? Have your payment information there. If you're quick, you might just be able to do it in under 60 seconds or less. Let me know how long it took you to pick up your Pocket Host server. Again, I've got my affiliate link down in the description below. I look forward to talking to you in the comments as well as over at the Discord with respect to anything you have with questions on dedicated servers, Pocket Host, or running your own server off of your own hardware. Until next time, happy farming.